Hey, SpongeBob's back! Incidental 70. One of the over 70 incidentals living in Bikini Bottom started his life with a gag that rings through the ears of millions to this very day. While Fred and Incidental 40 may be more iconic and farther reaching, there's just something about Incidental 70 that hits different. I love Incidental 70 like a son. He brings me a level of joy that can hardly be contained in a long video. But not all episodes of SpongeBob treat him with the respect, nay, the reverence that he deserves. So I'm going to rank all of his appearances across the SpongeBob franchise. But I'm not just going to rank them by quality, no but also by their use of my special little guy. But I'm not doing it alone. Ladies, gentlemen, the, the Technicolor rainbow, rainbow in between. between. Say hello to YouTube's own metabolic mouth. The nostalgia critic to my Linkara. It's great to be here to talk about everyone's favorite character. I've been a SpongeBob enjoyer for as long as I've been metabolic. Mouth. Incidentally, uh, see what I did there? Incidentally, uh, the metabolic from my username was taken from the episode, the critically acclaimed episode, Chum Bucket Supreme, and Plankton's original slogan of Chum, Chum is, is Metabolic, metabolic fuel. fuel. Of course, before Patrick changed it to Chum is Fum. Two tier lists, one for genuine quality and one for Incidental 70. It's what he deserves. And, and I, I love, love you, you, Incidental 70. Now, I must note for the sake of transparency that I will not be covering every appearance of Incidental 70. He appears multiple times in the Patrick Star Show, but that isn't technically SpongeBob, and because I don't want to watch the Patrick Star Show, I'll just be covering the SpongeBob appearances. Pickles. We all know SpongeBob. Square, with pants. He, he's the guy, the goat, Mr. Fry Cook. So when Bubble Bass crashes the function and decides that SpongeBob makes patties wrong, SpongeBob has a manic episode and leaves forever. In his absence, Squidward cooks the worst patties ever and is asked to leave the function. So Mr. Krabs decides that he has to get SpongeBob back! When Krabs descends upon Sponge's crib, things are upside down, even the music is backwards. Uh, side note, but I love Mr. Krabs' voice in these early episodes, it's so fatherly. SpongeBob is still at a loss at how to make a Krabby Patty, but after blowing up on Krabs... Hey, you crustaceous cheapskate! Cheap Sponge gets his mojo back. He returns to the Krusty Krab, and my boy is there! Yeah! Yeah! And it's revealed that Bubble Bass was hiding the pickles under his tongue the whole time. He also had someone's car keys under there. C can we talk about that? This episode is amazing. Perfect setup, Bubble Bass is everything, and the unique situation brings out the most in the characters. S tier. And my boy gets his first, and only, speaking roll! S tier! S tier! S tier! S tier! S tier! Uh Karate Choppers. I love karate! I love karate. I love money, yay. I hate all of you. Sandy is in her cozy ass house when SpongeBob tries to initiate a phone battle. Hello? 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 Uh, I SpongeBob goes through a bout of crippling paranoid schizophrenia and commits a hate crime. We got a my leg, boys! Let's go! Ooh, 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 ooh. After admiring Squidward's new hairpiece, SpongeBob is banished to the bathroom, where after spin kicking Mr. Krabs, he's banned from karate. SpongeBob is fired! And the face swirl animation looks fucking amazing. Instead of karate, they do photosynthesis. And to make fun of the differently able. Surprisingly common theme in Sandy episodes. <laughs> and they're caught having karate. SpongeBob admits his insatiable desire for karate, so Mr. Krabs puts him to work. Karate Choppers. What is there to say about Karate Choppers? This episode is jokes, man. Nothing but classic after classic. Definite S tier. And there's my boy, right in line in the Krusty Krab. But since he's only in one shot in the background, Karate Choppers gets D tier. Valentine's Day. SpongeBob hands out valentines to all of Bikini Bottom, and we see him get Mrs. Puff critically injured before Sandy nuts for him. I love SpongeBob's little announcer voice here, and he's such a good friend this episode. He sets up an elaborate plan for Patrick before visiting him. And I love that it's not a romantic love that SpongeBob has. Valentine's Day is just as much about platonic love as it is romantic. SpongeBob, we got ourselves a little problem. I got a pack of chocolate eating scallops trying to wrestle a balloon. Oh, Mr. President, chocolate eating scallops have hit the hot air balloon. Oh, 
Mountain, mountain climb, climb up, up and, and fall off. off. <laughs> Fucking funny. On God. This episode is great. Was that the Johnny Test whip crack sound? They go up the Ferris wheel, but it's still not Patrick's gift. Bro is mad. He loses his shit and SpongeBob gives him a handshake. That's the big gift. You got him a handshake? Patrick stares aggressively at his shaken hand as he and Sponge montage through the carnival. Patrick oh, hulks God. out and defies Butch Hartman and gets racially profiled before deciding that hard on sticks <laughs> must die. He demands SpongeBob and threatens to break something of his since SpongeBob broke his heart. Then in comes Sandy to save the day. This episode's great. Sponge brings the sweet and Patrick brings the laughs. Overall, A tier. My guy only appears in one shot. Right here, as Patrick drags SpongeBob onto the Ferris wheel. So unfortunately, it's a low D tier for my guy. Fools in April. SpongeBob's moving to become a peasant? Just kidding, you fucking idiots. It's April Fool's Day. SpongeBob loves April Fool's Day. He's pulling pranks on everyone from Gary to even himself. And yet Squidward still falls for SpongeBob's prank. Come on, Squiddy. Squidward quits after this, God bless him, and SpongeBob promises not to prank Squidward. So, SpongeBob goes about pulling April Fool's pranks on Bikini Bottomites, all while avoiding Squidward's wrath. What did you do to my drink?! You what?! You what? Until Squidward decides enough is enough and decides to pull the ultimate prank on the little sausage, turning him into a little sausage. This breaks SpongeBob, whose pranks were entirely harmless. That's my boy! There he is! Squidward grows a conscience after the entire town calls him a dick and decides to tell SpongeBob he's so. He decides to find SpongeBob and apologize. Squidward flubs his apology, but fortunately it's at Patrick. So Squidward tells SpongeBob that he's so. That he's. That he's. Squidward finally says that he's sorry, but his conscience is not in fact clear, as the ghosts of his past torment him. So he finally apologizes. He loves SpongeBob and everyone else. Squidward loves them. Woo! Fools in April is cute. It's fun to see Sponge so enthused about the holiday, and some of these gags are all timers. The episode itself gets a solid B. Incidental 70 is barely in it though. D tier, I fear. Walking small. Now this one's interesting because I've never fully seen it. Plankton makes. An announcement. I come to make an announcement. Shadow the Hedgehog's a bitch ass motherfucker. He pissed on my fucking wall. He's destroying Goo Lagoon to make room for the Chum Bucket Mega Bucket. It becomes increasingly obvious. He can, can deny, deny it, no, it longer. no longer. He is small. small. So he recruits SpongeBob, who's about to beat his meat, to assist him. SpongeBob gets violated by an eel who steals his last ice cream before getting emotionally violated by Plankton, who's got these two ice cream cones even though he only needs one. Plankton gaslight gatekeep girl bosses SpongeBob into demanding his ice cream back. I love the laughing gag there. Now Plankton does this under the guise of assertiveness, which SpongeBob does just great. He spots the guy who took his ice cream and lets him have it. SpongeBob is hesitant until Plankton further gaslights him. Plankton then tries threatening a beachgoer through SpongeBob, but it's all okay. Cause the man's wearing sandals. Plankton hits the road, Jack, and SpongeBob becomes a stand-up guy. After some convincing, SpongeBob gets rid of the beachgoers, dusting them away, stealing hot dogs, and blowing kites away. The bastard. I was a regular alpha male. SpongeBob realizes that he was being used for land development and strikes back against the nice guys finish last Sigma grind set Plankton using the power of love and kindness. This episode is an easy B tier, but my boy only appears for one shot, so unfortunately, his appearance gets a D tier. Hey, uh, your shoe's untied. SpongeBob, stop jerking off! He was looking for the sports channel. When Patrick comes in, Pat has his classic eyebrows, which are gross. Patrick doesn't know how to tie his shoelaces. Luckily, Patrick is lucky to have a friend like SpongeBob who knows how to tie his shoes, so the old pro shows him how to do it. Spongebob gets erectile dysfunction, eh, eh? Spongebob does it right, like, twice, then the universe refuses his request. Ah, body horror, gore, gore of my comfort character, no! Spongebob flashes back to when he was a homunculus before deciding to go to bed. Monday comes and the little sausage still can't remember. His untied shoes get him into all sorts of wacky shenanigans. He's retto! 
SpongeBob kicks his feet into the floor, activating the Krusty Krab theme. Sponge just I has just to stand in to stand that in one, one spot. spot. Sponge experiences a dolly zoom and then violent schizophrenic hallucinations. SpongeBob does the Savoy truffle over to Squidward, bringing him the patty for the hungry customer so they can eat it when he gives it to him, which is right now. Continuity error, Squid has eaten a Krabby Patty. He's eaten many. So just one bite either takes place before this, unlikely, or the animators got it wrong. Boy, I, I really sure hope someone got, got fired, fired for that, that blunder. And fucking Harold's not even wearing clothes and he leaves when he sees Mr. Krabs' pants off. SpongeBob begs the citizens of Bikini Bottom for help, but sadly, sadly I am only, I'm only an eel. eel. Enter the Flying Dutchman and after doing a meme, and stop staring at me with them big old eyes. And a TikTok sound. A monkey! He reveals that he cannot tie his shoes because he is only an eel. Gary does bruh sound effects bruh. Before teaching SpongeBob how to tie his shoes, featuring a ween. Let's go, Transdermal Celebration Gang. Where you at? This episode was fucking all right. Part of me feels like it was just conceptualized to be a good series of gags, which isn't a bad thing, but there's like half past no reason for SpongeBob to not know how to tie his shoes anymore. But the gags in this series of gags more than make up for a lack of direction. This episode is a solid A tier, packed to the brim with fun and iconic gags. My boy unfortunately takes another L as he's relegated to the angry crowd that sees Mr. Krabs crab boosie. However, it is C tier because I like the face he makes when he's chilling with the homies, Old Man Jenkins and that guy. Bubble Buddy. It's, it's Lee Erickson Day! day. Hinga dinga Torgan. Iconic. Patrick left to get more giant paper. Sandy went south for the winter. No. Are you sure? Yes. yes. So SpongeBob makes a buddy. After stick, rock, and sink buddy all die tragically, SpongeBob crafts Bubble Buddy. SpongeBob runs up to the Krusty Krab. Wait, bro has a day off? He's not supposed to do that. And Squidward wants to fuck Bubble Buddy? We serve all kinds. Time. So Squidward takes Bubble Buddy's order to avoid misery, misery and woe. Squidward feeds Bubble Buddy, but accidentally gives him diet shampoo. Th this episode is great. Like, I just wrote that in the script. This episode's awesome. So they go to Goo Lagoon after committing tax fraud, and they fucking kill Scooter! SpongeBob, unprompted, tells these beachgoers that Bubble Buddy's shitting. SpongeBob body shames a group of people. And there, there's my boy! There he is! There he is! <gasps> he called them fat. He washed her flipper. He owes him money. He made him provide excellent service. He made him experience high tides! Rest in peace. He poisoned the water supply, burned their crops, and delivered a plague under their houses! He did? No, but were they just going to wait around until he did? I say we tipped something over! So Squidward saves a lifeguard and gets Bikini Bottom to unionize against Bubble Buddy's tyranny. And they all threaten to shank the fascist, or as they say, I POP THE, the bubble. BUBBLE! But then SpongeBob reminds them all of what's really important. Funny muffler, jerky pal, boo-boo keys, snake eyes, we love you! But this rousing speech does nothing to quell the communist spirit of Bikini Bottom. He lives! Bubble Buddy finally speaks up, after letting Scooter die. So long. Uh, this is enough to union bust. Didn't you let Scooter die? But I think the ultimate question that this episode leaves is, can SpongeBob create life? Bubble Buddy is a classic. Even though Bubble Buddy lets Scooter die mercilessly, he's still a fun and memorable character. I'd love to see him again, but Incidental 70 ain't in his return episode. Sorry, LMAO. My boy has a prominent background role waiting in line to piss, but he doesn't speak. An unfortunate B tier. Patty Hype? The Krusty Krab has been turned to dust, and I, I hate, hate dust. dust. I don't want it building up in my home. A man crawls in, starving, thirsty, but with money to spare. But the man needs atmosphere, so Mr. Krabs gets to giving the Krusty Krab a theme. That one episode of Total Drama Island where Gwen gets buried alive. But, unfortunately, there's a talking dog at the Shell Shack. So, it doesn't work out. Back to square one. Mr. Krabs is given an idea by SpongeBob, the pretty patty. But Sponge is laughed out of the room. He goes to Patrick, who's also angry because he can't see his forehead. And the two decide to set up shop. After selling a purple patty to a guy whose favorite color is purple, 
The business is a runaway success, so Mr. Krabs pulls a Disney and buys it out, and just like Disney, is met with immediate backlash for a problem he didn't cause. So Mr. Krabs is burned at the stake and SpongeBob returns to the Krusty Krab. I love this episode. As a kid, I had a picture book of it, so the gags and story are burned into my subconscious like that picture of SpongeBob at the Christmas party. S tier. My boy is once again in line for the final time. Unfortunately, his back is turned so you cannot see his beautiful face. B tier. Christmas who? It's a SpongeBob Christmas special. We open in Encino, where Patchy, in his first appearance, introduces us to himself and his iconic bird potty. Three bells! We all know what three bells means! Free ice cream! No, you silly livers! No! Man overboard? You, I'm ignoring. Patchy reads the first letter from Name, name and Address, address withheld. withheld. So Patchy tells us the story of SpongeBob's very first Christmas. Sandy's house is on fire! Oh no, wait, it's just Christmas lights. SpongeBob is told about this Christmas. SpongeBob spreads the word of Communist Christmas to his closest pals and gets them to write letters with writing, writing sticks. Stick. Patrick gazes at God while SpongeBob writes his letter. SpongeBob shoots off everyone's demands or er, letters until it's crashed by Squidward's negativity. Why does he have to be so fucking negative all the time? Maybe Santa will bring Spongebob a dictionary so he can understand what Squidward just said. This is the best song in all of Spongebob. I used to sing this shit all the time as a kid, and the little dance Spongebob does plays in my head before I go to sleep every night. Da -da 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 -da. You know the one. But Squidward still hasn't written his letter. But Squid doesn't want to write it, and he doesn't believe in Santa Claus! The bastard. Santa Claus is a big phony! Phony! According to him. The town sings carols that keep Squidward awake until... morning. Where's, Where's Santa? Santa? SpongeBob fucked up. Never, Never trust a genie. genie. Even the snowman's like, alright, I'm out. Squid rubs his face in it and we get a meme! I love that they never sing on key. But Sponge got him... a gift. It looks like a clarinet. It smells like it too. Handcrafted with driftwood. My god, it even has a watermark. This act makes Squidward feel, feel like, like a, 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 a big, big jerk. jerk. Squidward reappears garbed in Santa clothes to fill SpongeBob with the Christmas spirit once more. In your flying machine! Uh, I loan them to the Easter Bunny. So they have Easter, but not Christmas. They celebrate Jesus' resurrection, but not his birth. All right, all right. No, no, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, 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 whatever. Squidward gives Sponge a gift, but then he gets peer pressured to give everyone a gift, thus removing everything from his home. Fuck you, SpongeBob. Santa leaves Squidward a thank you note so he so he just exists and lets Squidward give away all of his possessions. Fuck you, Santa. This episode is perfect, like actually S tier. But my boy appears in a storyboard? What the fuck? F tier, as much as it pains me because this episode is so fucking good. Then he was gone, and I was alone. Twenty long years with nigh an appearance of everyone's favorite fish. Until, finally, season 13, episode 6A, Potato Puff. He was back! He appeared in the Patrick Star Show first, but I do not care. Much like the review, the tier list must go on. Potato Puff. This episode is so fucking high concept. Gross ass title card, if I'm gonna be real with you. So, SpongeBob crashes a kid's baby video being shot. So the kid grows massive thighs. Then they avoid the dynamite factory, but head straight from Mrs. Puff's house. Girl, it's been 13 seasons. Yes, he is a lost cause. So she calls up the Maharishi and violently screeches at him. Mr. Guru launches his phone and nukes Latveria. Mrs. Puff is going crazy until she sees a hyper-realistic submarine and uses her iconic Batman grapple gun to grab a hyper-realistic potato from the Cyclops. Wait. Kiss the Cyclops? Wait. That's not the Cyclops, that's the French narrator! Potato Puff, the title character, got a solid laugh out of me. All the potato gags did. Pleasantly surprised, season 13. Mohawk Puff catches up on her stories while SpongeBob turns right for a while. 
Through a series of hilarious miscommunications, SpongeBob causes the death of a biker and hits the town as Mrs. Puff relaxes at home. Mrs. Puff is culpable for the death of hundreds. No, SpongeBob! Don't go to the park! No! SpongeBob, no! No, SpongeBob, not the prison, no! Sponge becomes a fed and gets hunted down by the biker who fortunately lived. No, SpongeBob! Not the diner factory! No, SpongeBob! Oh, uh, okay. I do not like the sassy legs baby. Mrs. Puff sees SpongeBob on the news and realizes that she caused Bikini Bottom 9-11 through her negligence. Puff cannonballs into town and Mohawk Mama stops SpongeBob in his tracks. Potato Puff is turned into mashed potatoes and SpongeBob mourns his dearly departed teacher. Oh, she lives. They hug it out before the bikers come to kill SpongeBob, but oh shit, she's Puff the Tough and she's in prison. This episode was okay. Surprising amount of laughs and good gags. Overall, to high C tier. And he's back! Camera in hand for the opening of the Dynamite Factory. A tier, just because I missed him so much. Say ah. Not an encouraging title, if I'm going to be honest. Plankton comes in like a wrecking ball into the Krusty Krab to steal the formula. Oh, hi, Grandma. She thinks he's cute as hell. Somehow this gaslights the whole restaurant into assaulting Plankton. I hate this town! So he goes home to his hot computer wife. He cries before turning into a light bulb. He turned into a fucking light bulb. So he creates an egg, a robot so diabolical, so devious, so adorable, that when people see it, they just have to say, aww. QT Pie is born, and after it makes people say, aw, it eats them. Unfortunately, Plankton is its first victim. Spongebob spots it and says the line, Bart! He then takes it in and gives him to Squidward, who starts another awe train. He tells them to get back! And the duck amazes the town before voring them all, causing Squidward to do his classic scream. You know the one. Krabs discovers that it was Plankton, as his name was literally written all over it. They want out, and form a human centipede with other iconic background characters like Hoopla! And I'm only here. She's back, baby. But they're stuck until the dumb robot eats more people. SpongeBob takes the duck to the world's sassiest veterinarian, who gets bored while SpongeBob watches mercilessly. The robot trails SpongeBob, who books it to Club World! Yeah! As the duck vores more and more people, I really don't like how much I'm saying vore here, SpongeBob escapes through there before being cornered by Cutie Pie. The citizens demand SpongeBob be vored before he tries to soothe the bird. Unfortunately, Vore wins, as it often does. So, they form the world's largest human centipede, featuring almost every damn fish in town, including my boy! Yeah! And they finally escape with the help of Plankton's Hulk-like strength. Beneath 150 Bikini Bottom citizens stands Plankton, and he's not happy. And they get into Glove World for free! Even Squiddy's happy. So, Spongebob conscripts Cutie Pie into a life of indentured servitude at Glove World. This episode was fun, I like it a lot, surprisingly. Perhaps I treated modern Spongebob too harshly. I mean, I always heard that Spongebob had gotten better, but... I guess this is living proof. A tier. And my boy appears in one of the funniest crowd shots I've ever seen. A tier, yet again. Abandoned Twits. That's right, folks. It's a Krusty Krab episode. Here's it's the clicker. clicker. No, no one would blame you. SpongeBob was exhausted from work? Sorry, I don't believe that. So Mr. Krabs invites Sponge and Squid on a weekend sailing trip, and SpongeBob gets burnt to a fucking crisp. Violently, too. That's like one of the worst ways to die. The boys are shocked to learn that they have to assemble their little yachty, and Mr. Krabs becomes part of the PC Master Race. So instead of going home, Sponge and Squid decide to work on the yacht before the instructions are torn apart. The pair follow their hearts. This thing is looking like a regular Squidward torture porn. Just kidding, I don't believe in those. SpongeBob brings a plank to life. He, he can create life. We, we talked about this earlier, you remember. SpongeBob can just create life. So they finally finish the frame, which tears apart and shoots Squidward to death World War II style. Oh, he's alive. He wakes Krabs, who gives the pair a fully finished ship base. Boy, this really is a Squidward torture porn. Copyright Mr. Enter. The pair decide to switch spots, which leads to the best gag in the episode. Look, Look out, out above! Above! above. Why did he explode? So, they finally finish the ship. 
the SS Secret Formula. We get the funniest squid face ever as they board. But it turns out Crab scammed them, as it's the grand opening of the Krusty Crab 3, the boat one. Patrick appears to ask for a combo with extra combo, and the business is open. SpongeBob gets seasick even though he lives in the ocean? Fire underwater. The Krusty crew deliver iconic burgers to the whole lagoon, doing what I assume is unpaid labor. Bubble Bass appears! His bubble ass acting as a cloud bird! He sinks the ship like it's the Titanic, and everyone dies. The end. Ah, oh, never mind, they live. Thanks, Rover Dangerfield! <laughs> this episode is confusing. I, I love the gags, but this shit drags. That rhymed. Why the fuck was Rover Dangerfield there? C tier. I... I couldn't find my boy. Please, comment where he is. Until then, F tier. Fuck you, abandoned twits. So, what did we learn from this cool experience? Nothing. I, I saw the, the devil, devil man. Thanks for watching. This is a different video than what I normally do because it's a video. I made content. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Metabolic Mouth for everything he's done for this video. He helped write. He didn't help edit. Fuck you. But he did help do the voiceover too. Everybody, round of applause for him. Alright. Bye.